<laughs> big up, big up, big up. Oh. How are you doing? We're doing good here. Oh, amazing, back yes. And you have your daughter here. My daughter, she's still sleeping. And, and I tried to see if she'd be um, open to being part of the live, but she, she's not ready for that yet. She's like, what do I say? I'm like, just be yourself. <laughs> and she's like, Naz, no. Naz, actually, you helped me. I'm not very good with Instagram, so. Um, I love it, right? Naz got up, started to help us. And then I said, oh, you want to come and stay and be a part of this conversation? I love it. Big up Naz and uh, you're, you're, you're brilliant. I love that. You know, there's the future generations and, and it just really shows how things are, it really shows how things are intergenerational. Mm -hmm. yes. Each one teach one, you know, and, and I think that's really, you know, um, part of our, our, our culture, like both of ours, you know, to really like learn from each other. So I love seeing like real life examples in real time. So big up, big up, big up. That's incredible, man. So I just want to big up everyone who's joining the conversation. Um, usually before we start, we, we start with like a check-in you know, just to kind of gauge, you know, where, where people are at, like, you know, how they're feeling. So um, for those who are on the, on the call, if you want to go in, in, the, in the comment section and just let us know how you're feeling on a scale from one to 10, you know, one being not so great, 10 being amazing, fantastic, you can let us know. Um, but I guess like, I'll, I'll just start with you two. Like, like how, how are you all feeling this morning? Like on a scale from one to 10, what would you say you're at? How are you, Ness? Like, I'm even nine. A nine, okay, my top of the morning, Monday morning vibes, spirits are high. I love it, amazing. Um, yeah. I'm probably at like a eight or a seven, only because um, you know, there's been a lot going on this week with mm. um, you know, our our, our communities. Absolutely. Um, so I'm just a little tired, but it's good. yeah, it's good. yeah, yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, me. Um, I'm I'm feeling about like a ten. You know, like right now I'm, I'm in Banff, like Alberta. So just like taking in the culture, it's, it's, it's really incredible out here. You know, it's out here visiting family and, and I've just fallen in love with the West. Like I might save that for like another live just to really process all the stuff that I've been soaking in. If you love nature, if you love like the outdoors and anything of, of that nature, like this is where it's at. Like it's, um, it's really incredible actually. So, um, so I'm, I'm definitely feeling on, on the higher vibes. Um, what else do we got here? I see uh, uh, Sankofa FCS says that they're at a nine. So big up, big up. Shadow Symbolic, man, feeling at an eight. Love those vibes, man. Yeah, man, everybody's on, 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 on a higher vibration, you know, and there's definitely a lot going on um, with, with, within our communities. Um, a lot of things have been, you know, brought to our attention um, that should have been brought to our attention like a long time ago. But, um, you know, it just really shows that there's like a lot of work to do, a lot of healing and, um you know, we all got to, you know, figure out how we can contribute together, you know, however that looks like. So always being open to that. And um, yeah, man. So I guess like, you know, we, we can just get get started, you know, into um, today's topic, you know, and I'm so grateful that you're able to join us on such short notice. I just sent you a quick text and I was like, mm -hmm. you know, I know it's last minute, but right away, as usual, like you're someone who's like really rooted in community and always, you know, um, willing to to contribute. So I'll, I, I thank you for that. And you know, I'm, I'm still like remembering um, when you came to like our boys group and, you know, shared with us and like just the, the vibration, your energy. And I was like, yo, man, she's dope, yo. Like she just <laughs> brings things to a whole nother level and the way how you're able to like connect with people and really bring that, you know, um, spiritual connection with everything you do, you know, and, and you're also like a hip hop head too. So I was like, yo, man, this is just like, yeah, come on, man. My we... shirt? Yeah, look, yeah. Look. Come it's on. Dragon Ball Z, um, <laughs> wow. Antonia. Vibe. wow look at that like today. <laughs> that's incredible and and that's what i mean like you know there's so many different intersections from like you know like african heritage to um, first nation indigenous heritage mm -hmm. and and culture and you know i i just thought like you would be like one of the best peoples to um to really you know help guide this this conversation you know so so that being said yeah big up big up to everyone um for those who are just joining us again um this is uh, our weekly uh, check-in called You Good Fam, and we like to create, like, a virtual space for everyone to just, um, you know, reconnect, especially in the time of, like, social distancing and isolation or whatever. We want to make these kinds of connections um, accessible. Shout out, shout out uh, Jolene saying that she is uh, eight-ish, you know, days of five out of five, you know, but she's being, being off of work, okay? I know she works super hard in the community, so it's great to see my people's, you know, taking... Um, time to rest, you know, I saw this post the other day that says that, that rest is, an, is a revolutionary act. And I wow. felt that. I really felt that. I was yeah. like, yeah, it really is, you know. 
And sometimes as people like us who are so embedded and so rooted in community, sometimes we feel guilty for taking rest. Like, you know, like we're not doing enough, but you are always doing enough. You always are enough and definitely do not feel guilty for taking time for yourself. Absolutely. And yeah. it actually combats that, um, that capitalism, right? Because they, they mm -hmm. were, were meant to be um, either eliminated or um, work, workers for that capitalist society. So actually resting, it is, like you say, a revolutionary act. Like it's self-preservation yeah. and, and care of our community. Yeah, mm. 100%. Absolutely. Okay, so let's get right into it, man. So intersections of, of African and, you know, Indigenous First Nation heritage, you know, um, I just want to put out like what comes up for, for, for the two of you? Like when, when I say that, like what are, what, what comes up? Like the similarities and just the, the vibes. Yeah. Well, maybe now I'll let you speak first because this is your lived experience, right? Mm. As that intersection. It's okay. Well, maybe, maybe like well, music. I'll is there, on, okay, sure. First. As, as, as a mom, you know, um, you know, being um, within my culture, I was raised with my grandmother. I don't know my birth mother. So okay. for, for me, my grandmother um, is Wendat from the Ottawa Valley area and um, also like a residential school survivor. So for, for me, being raised with her, um, you know, I got, I got a lot of some of our teachings, but it's mm -hmm. more that spiritual aspect. And I do remember one time... Um, I, I, I was young and um, my aunt actually went to Jamaica um, mm. because her, her, um, her in-laws, I guess, um, had a travel um, agency company. So they, they, they took off there because, you know, we're, we're in poverty. We, we can't right. they couldn't really afford to travel. And they took my grandma, my nanny, right, um, Catherine Martel. And uh, I remember she came back and she said to me, Oh Nicole, um, she saw a pic she had a picture of of, of our right? Mm. And she said, uh, "These um, are people of the land like us. Mm. If you ever get a chance to um, meet our Rastaman in your lifetime, I was little. Wow. Um, you have to give them much respect because they're they're like our people. Um, mm. They know the land. They're in touch with the land, and and basic like they're people of the land." And so that stuck with me mm. all of my life. So of course, when Nazarene's dad, he's from Trinidad, okay. um, came into my life, I automatically was a Boba Shanti Ras. Okay. Um, automatically, because I had those early teachings, I automatically had great love and admiration just for, to me, I always knew, you know, these are people of the land. Mm. They're just uh, um, for, further down. They're like our brothers and sisters for, Absolutely. further down. Um, but then at the same time, too, I wasn't too sure. I didn't understand um, Caribbean history. Right. And, right. and what that meant for the people there. So once um, I had a relationship um, with Nazarene's dad, you know, he explained to me of the Carib and the Arawak and, and those brought from Africa um, down there. So it was for me, I learned, I'm learning of just like if um, he's learning about my, my Wendat culture, our, our people here. Right. And so for me, raising Nazarene is really important that I understand as a parent, um, like I said this, we were lucky just before the pandemic, we got to meet, um, we got to go to a conference with Angela Davis. Oh, and, yes. Um, wow. That's it amazing. Was, it was beautiful. And I said to myself, because we were there with your um, friend Nadani, um, who's Cuban and Sri Lankan, right? And so there's another inter intersection Absolutely. There. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I thought, we're in the back. You know, and I thought, this can't be their experience. Like, Nazarene have to actually, and Nadani actually have to speak. And they also, um, Nadani's from Regent, right? Okay, um, okay. So they have a different, Na Nazarene comes from Kingston and Galloway um, with us. Right, right. right. Um, and Angela talks about that open-air prison. And mm. I thought, I need to talk to her. So I asked a question, um, and I introduced. So we got to actually speak to Angela. And uh, my question was, um, and I've always known this, having Nazarene ever since she was a baby. Mm -hmm. um, I can teach her what it means to be an Indigenous woman, but mm. I can teach her what it means to be a Black woman. So mm. then I would have to share parenthood um, in a very different way than 
I do say with your little sister Indiana, where you know she's Ojibwe, so she's mm -hmm. she's, mm -hmm. she's more um, she a different nation, but still um, indeed, yeah, lots of similarities. Yeah. But um, for your Trinidadian family, that's a history that I can't ever live. I can only support, mm. and so um, and I asked her like, what would that mean? Like, what you know, what is your advice? you know, Angela Davis um, for us. And what did Angela say to you? Remember? I know you were nervous. <laughs> and you're nervous okay. now too. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to remember what to, to get, basically what you're doing now, Naz, to get active. Yeah, mm. for community. Yep. Not to be just like student or anything. Nothing. I to love that. Active. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's so important to, to be active. And sometimes you you may not, you know, know what to do because you see other people who may be more seasoned and, and you know, have more experience, so you may get intimidated. But just just being there and being open-minded um, to, to the process, I think, you know, you eventually get that space. And that's just like my, my daughter as well. Like, um, she lives in, in Montreal with, 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 her, with her mom. And um, she her mom is originally from um, Gaspésie, which is uh, Quebec, um, the East End. So, so she's uh, part of the, the um, Mi'kmaq people. Uh, Métis and and they do a lot of like you know cultural events and and connections and just like you mentioned like I can only support like I I don't know what it's like to be an indigenous woman especially in in these times and um so what I do with my daughter I just hold space and and ask her questions and I'm really interested in her being able to like express like her emotions and feelings because there is a lot going on you know, on both sides of the fence, you know, whether, whether it's like what's happening in the black community, as well as um, in her indigenous spaces as well. And, um, and I know that now that I have her here over the summer, I'm going to be bringing her around, you know, all my peoples, including you two, like, so you'll definitely uh, meet me, my daughter as well. And we'll have like a lot of conversations, because I, I know that there's teachings, I know there's some stuff. And, and she's at that age where, where she's like, she's curious, but she, she's unsure as well you know because we're also in this like north american culture and then there's TikTok and all these other things that she's being subjected to but i i really want her to be like you know connected to like her roots and and her identity not just like the traumatic stuff i mean we do have to be aware of it but also the stuff that can empower her that can ground her in her like spirituality and her roots so that she can you know stand up firm and be like this is who i am you know and and that's like my the position that i see myself as you know to to ensure that um, and it seems like you're, you're doing like the work, like you're doing exactly that, you know, um, I want to talk about like, I guess like, like the music, you know, because mm -hmm. that's one thing that I noticed with, with, um, you know, indigenous culture and, you know, African or Jamaican culture specifically, cause that, that's where my, 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 uh, family's from, I'm like first generation Canadian, like whatever that means, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, you know, like, like the drum has always been something that has connected me to like first nation indigenous peoples. And there was always something that I, I was always gravitated towards and, and was just very familiar. Like, it just felt like, like, like I, I know this, you know, um, the, the, the drumming, just the way how um, the land would be described and, and to like work with the land, not to take from it, but to share, to contribute, to always offer something was very important, you know, um, that, that, that respect and um, just feeling just really, really connected. You know, um, I remember growing up in like French immersion and other spaces that just, made me feel disconnected and I didn't un really understand why. But I, I remember, you know, um, you know, being out um, in different like, like powwows or I remember <clears throat> back in the, back in the, um, I think it was like the mid like 2000s when um, Six Nations was, was, uh, was doing their thing. And, and I went out with, with Spin, you know, shout, shout out Spin. Ah, uh, Spin. Yeah, man, that's, that's my homie, saying? man. Like he, he really got me into like the activism and like, just like you're saying, like being like active, like not just, observing but actually being there so we got to go out to six nations and being with the people and i remember they had like the barricades and like certain people were not allowed you know what i mean they were just not having it and i, I rate them for that but but we were allowed and i felt so humbled that i was allowed into the space and you know sitting with the elders and hearing their story and and just like what you mentioned about you know the the, the african connection you know like like we're, we're cousins and and the way how, how we connect and whatnot it just made me become really present to that and i was like you know what even as someone, you know, we have stolen from Africa and I'm like, we need to do a lot more um, building with, with the First Nations peoples here, you know, so I, I kind of see this conversation as like the beginning of that. 
and to you know keep this conversation going but yeah there's so much that it just feels feels right and there's so much that we can learn from each other and um i think the the you know the the more we we build those those intersections like the stronger we all could be you know i think it's a force to be reckoned with most definitely so yeah i, I love that you say that because it is true and it's a um you know, fear of, of, of that industrial um, uh, mindset. I love um, teachings of John Trudell. I, I hold very dear to me. And he always talks about um, that industrial, um, like, kind of class of yeah. people who, who see the land as resource, see humans as resource, to be humanized and, and take that out. And um, that our power is in knowing our humanity and our connection as tribal oh. people. And Indeed. we're tribes from all over, either you're the um, industrial class or you're tribal. And that's right. the way John Trudell sees it. And that industrial actually um, controls by the illusion of power. And the illusion mm. of power is just authority, right? So then oh. if you look at our, both of our nations, right? Yes. Um, those, you know, that, that, that trying to enslave nations of, of, of people trying to eliminate another or make into something else. And that's what they do with our communities. That's authority. Right. Where our power is um, connecting to one another, connecting to our humanity, and most of all, connecting to the, to the land. Mm. And it's interesting because when we went to, um, to Grenada, um, I went to Grenada being a, a U of T student. Okay. I did a summer abroad and we went to First Nations House and they um, actually helped pay for Nazarene to come so that she could learn about oh. the black of the land. Oh. Her family being originally from, well, your, your dad and your grandma and all of them um, are from Trinidad, but of course come from other spaces, but your grandma and your dad is also um, Carib. Yeah. Right. And, okay. Um, okay. <laughs> To actually be in Grenada, I think was like one of the best experiences that we could have. Now I didn't want to take. Uh, Grenada was nice because yeah, your dad wanted beautiful. to take. He wanted to take Nazarene to Trinidad, and of course, you know, as as her mother, I also have to respect the fact that, um, you know, her dad would want to take her. So one day he plans to take her to Trinidad so he can show mm, her homelands. Right. But you actually got a chance to see Caribbean life. Mm. How was that for you? Um, I really liked it. Everybody was like nicer down there than here. Like you just go outside and everybody was like, good morning, or, hi. And like oh. down here when we got back, everybody, no good morning or hi. You know yeah. what? That that that's a I love that that um, simple you know um, observation because it's true in in Caribbean life. Like because everything's connected. Like you know. Um, you know, like, even if you don't know the person that, that you're seeing, like, you know, it's just acknowledging another human life, you know, and, and just that, that, that human connection out here, we're so disconnected from that, you know, it's, um, it's so true. And, and that was something that I, I absolutely adore about, about the Caribbean, you know, the sense of community, sense of family, of course, it has its own hiccups and, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, for the most part, like there is a, a sense of connection. Like it would be strange to like walk past someone and just not say good morning or hello, you exactly. know, as if you're invisible, you know, like that, that's an incredible. Um, and and, and yeah. like me coming from, it's the first time I left um, my land here. Like I get upset like thinking about it because it's like, I felt like I was a part of a community like already. Yeah. Just being right there. I felt so welcome, so loved. And when I came and I came back here and like, it's, it's my home for generations. Right. right. And I felt so like, I went, I went back, Naz didn't come with me this time, but I went back for carnival because I just right. missed the land. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so we were supposed to be there for your 16th birthday, but then COVID happened. Wow. Oh, so and sorry to hear that. Carla, um, you know, Robinson, who we connected with, um, is like family now. So always checks in on us, and we always check in on them and see how they're right. doing. It's, so it's like now we have a, a, you know, a family, and it's automatic. And that happens in Jamaica too. Yeah, we still talk to some people. Yep. So we have yeah. we, we went to 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 Jamaica visit Jamaica as well, but we did um stay in a resort. Um, yeah. Why I make the faces? <laughs> no, it, you know, go ahead. Yeah, to right. the land. Um, but I 
brought your um, Nazarene's older brother who um, is diabetic, and we haven't mapped the land out yet. Yeah. And also, too, I wanted to experience um, that that because um, when we're in 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 Grenada, to be able to see, you know, stay with the, with Grenadians, right. like we didn't right. have that separation of right. a resort or the school. Um, right. To experience what that felt like. It, it is important. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and all I like we connected with, and then of course there's the staff there, right? Because the mm -hmm. resorts do. You know, there is a lot of oppression I can see, and I don't yeah. have the lived experience, so I yeah. don't want to speak too much about it. But I could see it as a right. visitor. Right, of course, of and, course. But then also, too, that, I mean, there was people that, like, that were working there that came every day, and that's what made it, was mm -hmm. those who, you know, those who are in their, like, locals that are in the resort, that that's their, that's their home, and that's their workplace. Right. And that's who we connected with. Of and, course. Um, there was even a time um, we still talked to Richard, um, who's like family. <laughs> Amazing. So we're going to go back once COVID happened and, and, and meet his family. Yeah, because we ate, he took us outside of the resort for dinner for lunch. Okay. And then we let him eat with him, and he was like, oh, you're going to let me eat with you? Normally, wow. we just drive the people here and wait outside. I couldn't imagine Man. that. Man. Like, Man. He, he, <sighs> I said to him, that's what he, he was going to, picked us up lunch, and then stood off to the side, and I thought, wait a minute, no, no, mm. you're, because our automatic thing is, we're a guest in your home, right? Because that's an indigenous way of, right. of yeah. <laughs> So And I'm like, we're, good, you, we're eating your, you're treating us, like, yeah, yeah. You, you know? And he said, to yeah. him, no, people don't do that. Man. And then I thought, oh my God, there's actually, like a lot of those people who I realized then a lot of people who do come to resorts don't see. No, that. no. You know, I, I'm so glad you mentioned that. It's going to be emotional just thinking about that because, you know, it's one of those things because we're, we're spiritual people and, you know, Jamaica is a very spiritual land. Like, like it's, it's real, recognized real, like, you know, so like you don't even have to speak from the moment you step into the place. They're like, yes, like that's, that's one of us, you know? And um, it's so true. Like I, I, I've definitely done like the resort, you know, vibe and I've stayed with like family and friends and stuff like that. And, you know, me being like, you know, a, a black man from Canada coming there, it's like, sometimes people like at the resort will look at me like I'm supposed to be working there, right? Because I, I'll look, I look Jamaican, right? So, and then when I see that the workers, they're just like, yo, like, yo, it's the man them, you know? And, and of course, well, we'll have like these, these side conversations. And, and of course me, I'm always like, in, you know, curious about the real story, you know, and, and the resort life is, is crazy. You know, like these are people who are just trying to like get by and just trying to work and, and the conditions are crazy. Like most resorts don't even allow you to tip them when they're giving you all the service and stuff. And, and they try to just keep things so re restricted and, and, and the people who, who work there work so hard and they're so loving and caring and the disrespect that they get is, is, is outrageous, you know? So exactly what you're talking about, about like, you know, the, yeah, like the driver, like taking him out, and like I would have to like low key give him like his tips up, like yo, hold that, and he's like looking at, it, he's like, oh really? I'm like, don't worry, just I, I understand the system here, you know, and and feeding them, I'm like of course we're gonna break bread, like that's just strange for me to be eating in front of someone and not sharing, like that's just like it, that doesn't sit right in my in my spirit. So, but I'm I'm so glad that um, that individual was able to get that experience, right? Because that's like a dime a dozen, like you know, I mean, like they they don't really get people like that um, often. And, and when they do, it's it's a blessing. But for the most part, people, um, you know, travel to places like the Caribbean, especially Jamaica, you know, because they know Bob Marley, Yaman, and other other things or whatever. But but they don't respect the land. You know, they don't respect yeah. the people. It's very yes. like colonial mindset, that industrial, you know, like, like you mentioned. And, and it's heartbreaking, you know, because Jamaica is one of those places that I see and I'm like, it has so much potential and people are just robbing it and just, you know, it's, it's nowhere near where it should be. Let's just say that compared to like other islands, because I've been fortunate enough to travel to Grenada, St. Lucia, um, and a few other spaces. And I see their infrastructure and I'm like, Jamaica is just like, you know, and just to mention, like, you know, like my, my daughter, um, you know, Aaliyah, like she was able to go to um, Jamaica with, with her mom and she stayed on the resort and she enjoyed that, got to swim with dolphins and stuff. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that's cute though. But I'm, I, I told her, I'm like, you know, when you're about like 16 or so, because I want her to be at a certain age where she can, really appreciate the culture so I can like bring her up into the mountains and and be with the Rastas and the people so she can really absorb it 
but also to see the similarities, you know, with, with their indigenous First Nation communities, you know, um, here and, and there. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But I'm glad that she got at least a glimpse, you know, just to really kind of connect. And, and she, she sees herself as, as, as Black and Indigenous. Like, she's very proud of, of both cultures. And, and I'm so happy that she embraces both, you know, because that's exactly what it is. So. Because that's an important thing too. Like Nazarene makes me like, oh, because we'll go and and it. It's not that um somebody gave me a teaching about um the word being proud of. Like you know we always want to say we're proud of our children, right? right. But then proud also um they give me this teaching that pride um it's also linked to pride, right? And mm -hmm. in the way of um it's an expectation. So I automatically want to say that, but it's more of like you amaze me. Yes. <laughs> That's it. And I and I feel so um like admiration because Maz, you do you it's important because you bring us a, a, a connectedness. Like when you dance, you know, of course there's your visual um mm -hmm. of who we are in our in our makeup, in our right. what we look like. But then um her dad, um um Frost, he uh he used to dance with us when we were together. So he used to have a grass regalia and he beat it himself at Trinidadian pendant. And yeah. um, he, he hasn't danced in a while, but he'll, 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 he'll come he'll out dance, and dance. He'll dance with me on the line a few months ago. And so when Nazarene made her regalia, she asked her dad if she could borrow his Trinidadian beaded pendant, right? Right. And uh, she wore it for a bit, but it was kind of big. So she made her own. So now when Nazarene goes up into spaces, like you have, you bring that intersection where say there's um, people um, from the black community who, who might see our culture and feel like, oh, that's theirs. Right. Nazarene is the point to come up and be like, oh, oh my gosh, I love your pendant. Oh, that, yeah. And then um, a family came up to me and they were like, oh, I love your outfit. And they were, yeah, they were black. And then they, want to take pictures with me. So you bring yeah. that community and now instead of being something that maybe right. they might just watched, yes. now they can go up and talk to me and take pictures if they want. Yeah. Feel more comfortable than like with yeah. me. So it's like now the way that I see it is like you're and you provide that welcoming space to be mm. to come into our circle. Yes. And and for me that's so important because like that's what unity and peace is. You know, when we, when, when you say said it earlier, like people yeah. think of Jamaica as like Bob Marley. When we really take the teachings that yes. the whalers in him provided to the land, it's like you know, um, you know, we were not, until we come together and see ourselves as, um, or John Chadell says, as tribal people. You know, we will always be under that capital and that industrial form of oppression and this is you know as we know this is what they fear right is our yeah. connection so when as you're you allow those watching us to like see themselves and be so mm. proud and walk up to you it oh. makes me like like this I is know. what you do it for right like look at oh, me man. Pride. no i feel it i really do oh my god mm. and it makes me so and this is the point of like kill a uh, I don't know his first name, but Gib Gibran, you know, that, that author, that yes. uh, Lebanese author, um, when he talks about um, in his book, The Prophet of Our Children Not Being Our Children. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Daughters yes. of Tomorrow. Oh. I actually get to see it because, like, I'm, like, we're in a role. This is, I'm the role of Mother to Nazarene, but you're your own person. Indeed. You represent so much more. And that's why it's really important that. You know, as an Indigenous woman, uh, having an Afro-Indigenous child, you're mm. also, you have aunties out there that are beyond me. Yes. And they can teach you things that I cannot. Man. You know, we just saw um, on, what was it, Sunday when we were at Dundas Square? Um, no, no the, the first Thursday for that non-Canada day. Yeah. And tell there me about that. Club, yeah. Black women who came to me that they, they're on, now we're friends on Instagram. Um, and they're gonna, I, I, you know, I talked to, they were, they were talking to me, right? Uh, as just as an indigenous woman and how we're similar. 
yes. and, our, and our oppressions and, 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 and how we're people of the land. And, and so we started talking about these. And then I said, oh, here, here's my daughter. <sighs> and, then, and then they looked at Nazarene, where she's from. So then when we walked over, what was the first, do you remember the first thing they said to you? They said, hi, I'm not in my aunties. Oh, I that's love it. what it's about, right? It really is. Oh, I just love what you said, like, you know, inviting people into, into the culture and, and, you know, it's an experience. Like, it's not this like observer type of like space, you know, like you actually got to contribute and, and experience it. And I think like by the experience that's what brings out the humanity, which is something that's often like forgotten and lost, you know, so it's beautiful to see like real life examples. And that's exactly how, how I see my daughter as well you know, um, bridging those those connections and, and really showing that there isn't much that like really separates us. Like, you know, it really is like one, you know, um, it's just maybe different angles and different perspectives, but it's really one, you know, and it's it's just really beautiful to see. And, you know, for, for me, like raising, raising two daughters, you know, like like the, these young women, like I, I'm really mindful of of recognizing that again, like they're, they're, they're not mine. I'm just this guardian here to recognize their gifts and talents and just kind of like create the space for them to like really explore that and, and flourish. Cause I feel like previous generations, because of so much different circumstances and whatnot, um, that, that mindfulness piece was kind of absent. You know, I think like a lot of like gifts have been missed and, you know, gone dormant and whatnot because of, you know, society pressures and whatnot. But like, like I, I see these, this new generation of these, especially these young, young women that are coming up, you know, like, like that the confidence and just like the, the sense of knowing and, and the in-depth like spirituality that these children have. I mean, it's just so beautiful to see. And um, I'm just excited to, to see the, the new generation because it's like, when I think about all the generations that came before us, you know, like I saw this meme and it was really breaking down like how many grandmothers and great grandfathers and this and that, like that led up to this moment in time right now. I think it was like over like 4,000 like individuals or whatever, when you really break it down, you know, like each family member and all of that, to lead up to this present moment in time. So we are here on purpose. Like this is not an accident. Like this conversation right now that we're having is not an accident. And and we are, are, are living in that. So, you know, so that being said, like, you know, just you just being who you are is already uh, the revolutionary act. You know, like sometimes I know as a young person, you may feel like you, you don't know whatever, but all you have to do is just stand there and just show up. You know what I mean? And then you'll things things will start flowing. You know, I'm a firm believer of that. You know, like whenever in doubt, just stand, you know, like be present. And then from there things just start moving. I promise. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's true. And I love how you talk about um it being because there's the, also the other intersection of, you know, our our, our genders, our our, our non though you know yep. those of us who might be non binary. Like for me, I'm raising you know, as a mother, I'm raising Nazarene, um, you know, my daughter. Yes. Um, one of the roles that I find is very important for me, just in me and my experience with Nazarene is um, also helping her, um, in, in not helping, more supporting the role of her father. Because sometimes, you know, I also tell her, you know, Nazarene, you're an Afro-Indigenous woman. You don't know what it's like to be a Black man. Mm -hmm. mm. So I don't know what it's like. Right, um, right. So I always say, you know, your dad, um, with certain things, like, try and be understanding. Like, you know, sometimes as, right. as, as parents, of like, sure with me, she might get from another perspective, oh, your mom, you know, you go to your brother Justin, right, when I'm, I might be doing something, say, that might be, you know, a thing. I always say, you know, Nazarene, always be mindful, like, your, your dad has to walk in this world as a black man. Right. Who not only, um, mm. you know, he... he it has a visible, but when he speaks, he has a very thick Trinidadian accent. So there, right. there, that can come onto them. And you see that when, you know, you're in the car with him and the police pull him over, like all of those type of things mm -hmm. to, to understand. I mean, I don't know, understand it, but to have that eye and, and to see that, um, you know, from him. So, you know, maybe sometimes, you know, you might just have that compassion. I think that's a, like, you know, as, mm -hmm. as a mother, um, you know, as, you know, having um, a child with something <clears throat> like that difference, having that different um, yeah. cultural um, aspect and that lived experience is just having a bit of understanding for, for that as well, because, you know, she, we, she might know what it's like to, to, to live 
you know, as a, a in, in the black community, but not as a man. Right, right, and right. And a father, right? So, Indeed. And why, why Indeed. So that we give shout outs to your dad. Love to press. Absolutely. You know? Wow. No, that's beautiful. Um, wow. <laughs> So much, so so much to say, like, you know, and, and th this is, to me, this is what, like, doing the work looks like, you know, like, really, really being, being present and, and having those, th those conversations and, and again, it's a humanity piece, you know, because, yeah, like, we may, we we're born into this physical reality in a certain way, and that's going to dictate a certain way of, of experiencing life, you know, but that doesn't mean that we can't, like, stop in our space and then try to understand how someone else maybe um, going through things, you know, and having that empathy and compassion, which is, which is so, so important, you know, and I definitely have those conversations um, with, with my daughter as well, ex explaining the challenges, right? Because like, for example, like she, she lives in Montreal with, with her mom and, and I explained to her, yeah, there's times where like, I would love to be around as much as I, as I, as I can, as I would like to, but because of distance and so many other factors, you know, um, that, that comes in, into play. And, you know, there, there's times especially when it comes to like disciplining and um, you know, there's, there's things that um, because sometimes her, her mom has to be like the, 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 you know, the mother and the father at the same time, the, the nurturer and the disciplinary. And then, and then sometimes that creates a different dynamic. So I'm doing my like parenting through, through FaceTime and stuff like that. So when, when she's here in person with me, um, my, my younger daughter, like I see her all the time and whatnot. Um, so when, when Aaliyah, my older daughter is with me, um, I, I take her aside a lot more and I have these like one-on-one -on -one conversations and sometimes she gets a little frustrated and stuff, but I explain to her, I'm like, this is the time where I can like really be present and give you certain teachings and lessons and understandings that I normally wouldn't be able to do or I can kind of do, but it's just obviously different and, and whatnot. And, um, and really just giving her like a broader perspective, you know? Um, and it's so helpful. Like, again, like having those conversations um, consistently is, is super important. That mindfulness and compassion and um, and yeah, that that's essentially like emotional intelligence, you know. And and I think the world needs a lot more of that. And you're definitely you know creating that space. So so big up to you, man, for being like a, a futuristic parents, because like you know like this this is where it's at. And then we're gonna grow these these children with that that knowledge, you know, that mindset. And and this is what they're gonna carry out um, to the future generations. And and not just biological children that that they you know um you know produce or whatever but as you know like, like you're a mother to many like you're you're a teacher you know like everybody who you come across like when you came to like our boys group like you know people were getting emotional like your spirit is contagious and and you're just so like welcoming and nurturing and loving that um you know like you you leave an impact so so you know it's um yeah we just got to keep doing what we're doing like I, I love that you say, because with Nazarene, um, you have little ones, especially in, um, you know, those of us in, in, you know, in community who have that intersectionality. Oh, my gosh, they look to you like there's, um, like, <laughs> Stephanie's um, little one. She's like, look, there's Nazarene. Oh, my right? gosh, they see themselves. Yeah. You know, in, that, in that kind of future, too. And, um, of course, you know, as dancers, we have that um, as well, too, to you know, kind of build up those, that, that dancing, um, you know, those future dancers too, because yes. as we know, like how you spoke earlier about um, music and, you know, dance is a form of um, that expression through that music, which is like, like our cultures are very, are very linked in that, in that way. Mm -hmm. And like lots, like lots of cultures all over have that um, drum and dance. Yes. And yes. That is, and, you know, and, you know, through Naz and I, that's how we connect. Um, mm. And through hip hop as well, because we're both Yeah, hip -hop yeah. Well, Naz, can, yeah. can you tell me like-, like Even how... as she has lived, she has Black Moon shirt on. Come on, I, like, y'all are just- Black Moon, who wasn't even- um, you Come on. The Black Moon was around. I love it. You like these, you know, hip hop babies, you know, say my daughter had, had a, had a, a, a Wu-Tang shirt and she comes to me, she's like, Wu-Tang's for the kids. I like, I swear, I almost like shed a tear. I was like, oh, <laughs> it's so beautiful to see like the intergeneration and just like the connection and, you know, the, 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 this is, this is it right here, you know, it's so beautiful. But, um, but, but, but Naz, I, I wanted to um, ask you like, um, like, what does it feel to like dance? You know, like, like, what does that do for you? I like, I love dancing, but I really love dancing with mom because mm -hmm. it's like, 
we're connecting and we can tell each other like what we're gonna do next without talking. Yeah. And it's like I can't do that with anybody else except for Andy a little bit. And your little, my sister. little sister. Really? Yeah. It's like can, a, can you can yeah. you talk more a bit about that like that because because Nicole I've seen you dance you know and just the way how you're connecting like there there is like a language without actually speaking you know but this is really fascinating and you said I you're able to do that with, with your mom and then like your 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 sister as you mentioned like so um, yeah could you speak more to that like what, what's that like like having that like sense of knowing you know that connection that's deep it makes me feel like really connected with my mom and mm. Andy too. Yeah, it's like um, we're able to, I don't know how I feel it, like when I'm in that connection with you, it's like this happiness. Mm. It's like it's like the joy of being able to, um, that's why um, dancing powwow is, is great. I also, we really love dancing to hip hop, like um, of course, um, all kinds, but we are yeah. also um, like we dance for Snotty Nose, which is you know, yep, an yep, hip -hop. Yep. and um, it's like you get to ride the beat and then the lyrics, right? So you get to oh. dance in between, um, and we do wow. that with Powell too. So you're Whoa. able to dance with the drum beat, but then you can move with the singers, right? And for I'm a big one as a dancer of you know, we visually look great, you know, because we're, we're moving, we have regalia, we look, you know, we, we're the visual aspects. And as um, a very visual culture, sometimes we forget um, what's behind the visual. And mm. for Pow Wow, it's always the singers. Like, we wouldn't be anywhere without the singers. Mm. And sometimes we forget that, right? And we forget about the power and we think, oh, it's just the drum beat. But their voice. Yeah, because it's like when I dance with you and Indy and then with Isaiah singing, it's the best. Yeah. It's, and then we can do that with hip hop too, but it has a different thing because where powwow is, there's word songs, right? Which right. are in different languages, Sioux, Ojibwe, some Cree, you know, but with hip hop, it's like English words and they have, you can do a little different right. gestures, little things that are different. And like when we were for doing the Polaris Gala, like Naz was supposed to be in the, I can't remember our name video, but at the time she was a teenager right. and I couldn't get a hold of her. Oh, a younger teenager. <laughs> you were a younger teenager. Right. You're to be now. But I was hey. like, oh, God, go for the video shoot. And I couldn't find her. Oh. You were hanging out with your friends. So you missed that right? boat, right? But you were there for the Polaris Gala. And it's like, we're able wow. to just look at each other and know when it's time to switch spots. We can just look mm. at each other and it's a smile, it's a gesture, and that's kind of what that language is. And we're able to move, you know, Naz can do a look to me and I know, okay, now it's a time to, 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 to do a spin or it's time to do this. And we can, we can speak that um, mm. music language. I yeah, no, no, for sure. For sure. I mean, like, I, I, as you're speaking, like, I can't help but to think that, like, you have always had that connection with her. Like, I'm pretty sure you can recall like times when she was like an infant and, you know, having those, those kinds of connections as well. You know, this isn't like an overnight thing. This is something that's like, cultivated intentionally, you know, and, 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 I, and I think that's, that's beautiful. And our what, like when you're reminding me now, of, like even pregnancy, like you were there mm. in the waters, you know, and we, that's mm. like, okay, like water is life. It's life to all life, but it's life to us. Like, so when we dance and we're moving, we're moving our bodies, but we're also moving the water within our bodies. You know, um, so when we look at that two row wampum belt, that one of those original yes. treaties, each row is the settler way and the indigenous way, and we're supposed to take care of each other. And the white part is that water. And right. we're supposed to be taking care of the environment and the water so that all life can be. Well, it's the same thing when we're dancing, right? We're, we're taking care of, the waters in our bodies, um, mm. as well as, you know, we might be praying for the water too. Like, yeah. I remember Nazarene the first time she danced Fancy Shawl with me. She's the reason why I started dancing. It is oh. because when she was small, like I always wanted to dance when I was young. Okay. I got, um, I was also raised um, with, um, I got my, I didn't have a biological mother. 
Um, okay. It was my grandmother who was my mother for the first seven years. Mm -hmm. And then my dad remarried. And then I, I don't like the word stepmom because I feel yeah, like it, I agree. it doesn't do justice to no, stepping into it, those roles. It doesn't. Agreed. But she became my mom and it was a very different way. Like, you know, in her family, they were like, oh, you don't sing very good. Oh, you don't dance very good. So they had that in their, in their uh... family. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to dance. Mm. And you were at a powwow. And um, she was just little, like just how like old? Walk, and she okay. wanted to touch a jingle dress, and I said no. And then we were at the Native Canadian Center, and it was Deanne um, Hupfield. She was Morrison at the time before she got married, and she had a dance class. And I was like, oh, I'm going to take Nazarene. Nazarene, you can start. And we regale you making class. We can start your dancing journey. And she said, right. if you want to dance, um, if you want your daughter to dance, you have to dance. So then, okay. Like, so then that was the start. So <laughs> wow. then I started dancing, and then Naz had a. She started dancing with me. We danced fancy, and wow. she was about seven years old after dancing fancy for a few years, and asked for a jingle dress. And that's a different wow. style of dance, as as okay. some of you may know, yeah. that healing dance. Yeah. So our good friend EJ Quandabens made her dress for her. We feasted her dress to give, um, to feed that life of, uh, in the spirit of those regalias. Mm -hmm. And you danced your first powwow and you got offered lots of tobacco from the community. Wow. And you said, mommy, this dance is hard. <laughs> <laughs> Can I take the dress off now? I just want to play. <laughs> oh, right? I and, love it. It's so cute. And that's that, that little kinder and kidding you but now you know you now you got that teaching of the importance and you're primarily a fancy shawl dancer but we also have your she dances jingle sometimes she'll mm -hmm. use my dress but you know the difference between that right mm. and then we're at a, a powwow in Shawanaga not this is before so Nazarene was about six and there was a community member Elsie who's yeah. from um, Mississauga in the Blind River and Picked, she went around giving to different powwows, picking one youth to give water teachings to. She picked Nazarene. We actually have a picture of her walking away with her copper vessel, going to get <laughs> teachings from Elsie. Mm. At the time, I was with Nazarene's dad, you know, when we were together. Yeah. And what we didn't know is Elsie is a community member and a cousin and an auntie of my partner, Isaiah Kata now. Wow. Andy's dad. So Nazarene was actually getting teachings from a community that I she love was it. very close to before wow. she became a, a part of a part of that community. And um even your even though your her dad and I are not together, he's still a part of the community too. His, Absolutely. Absolutely. His partner is a is a fancy dancer as well. Amazing. Sister. Yep, she has a new little sister, um there we go. She, Amara, um, who is um your dad is now a father too. Actually, was Nazarene's childhood friend. And wow. Your sister and is I a new dancer. And I knew like Amara ever since her mom was like pregnant with her. Yeah. Amazing. So we have a lot of like, it's 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 a family that's just gotten bigger. Even though you know sometimes we think oh when couples break up it's uh, but that's not how we roll. That, we, I we I love that, that love man. And respect for each other. I'm 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 the same way too, you know. Like I, I'm not with like the the mothers of, of my children, but like we still have that very much family connection, and that was also really important for me, like for my daughters to see that, you know, like like family can look in so many different ways. And I, I grew up in in where you know people separate, and then it's like it's beef. It's like I hate you, this and that, and and all kinds of language that kids don't really care about. Like I remember being a kid, like I I love my mom, I love my dad, like that's all that really matters. Like I don't really care for whatever politics that was going on and that's something that I always remembered as a kid and, and growing up I was like I don't want my kids to ever experience that I want them to see that we're able to like you know I can go to to my, my daughter's you know family house in in Montreal sit down have dinner crack jokes and 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 be a family in that capacity it just looks different but we're still connected and there's that the respect and the co-parenting and all that is there you know so it's a very fortunate space and I'm realizing that not everybody's a fortunate to have that kind of like sense of community and to kind of like rise up out of those, like, um, I guess like, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't know, just like 
those those challenges <laughs> you know like and, you know and that it, right there is a way to like another act of um decolonization and there we and go having our communities come back together even in the family units when they turn because we get that like we think about it all of our our grandmothers and aunties watched like soap operas and we saw how that stuff went when they <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're cleaning oh, that out and we're, no. we're really coming into that community and understanding that yeah so it's a, another act of resistance like you said earlier in, in, in our talk you know yes and that's important no it, it really is. And, um, you know, real quick, I just want to go back to, like, you know, your daughter bringing you back into, into dance. And, you know, it, it, like, as you're saying it, it, it's like it was something that was always there for you, but it, it was just dormant, you know? Because, like you said, like, you're in, in this environment where it's like, if you try to sing, it's like, oh, you're not, you don't sound like Whitney Houston, so don't bother or something like that. Yeah. And it's just like, well, oh, okay. And then you get shut down. And, and I, I remember, you know, um, growing up, and feeling the same way on, on certain aspects, whether it's like hockey or even like, like rapping. There's a time where, you know, I almost stopped doing that. And I'm so glad I didn't because I wouldn't be doing the things that I'm doing now because hip hop brought me into a whole nother world, which I, we can probably say for another live. But, um, you know, like, it's just amazing how like our, our children can bring us back to like our, our essence, you know, and, and how this like student teacher element is like interchangeable, you know? So like uh, depending, you know, so like today, like your daughter might be the teacher. And then tomorrow it's you and then so on and so forth. But to be open to that and to be aware of that, I think is the magic. And oftentimes we're like, we come from a place where it's like, well, children are supposed to be seen and, and you know, like not heard. And, and you're just a child. Don't worry about that. Like, th that's just this madness to me. You know, like I've become really present and, and I definitely have to thank like indigenous teachings for that, you know, where there's teachers and everything, whether it's like, like the other day, like this like little like bird just kind of like, was trying to communicate with me and then just like sat on my, on my lap, like on my knee. And I was like, what is this? And it was a sign of like nurture and connection. And, and these are things that I wouldn't have been present to. I would have been like, like get out, like shoo it away or whatever. But I had to like really embrace and see these, these different teachers and how they show up, you know? So it's super, super important. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so true. Um, because they are and and that, um, children being seen and not heard is like, we did, we grew up with that. Right. Yeah. And um, it's I find that so beautiful that we can have that be told, but then we have. So when we talk about those that seventh generation um, in our on. teachings of, of changing things and bringing it um, back to that um, to that kindness and that understanding of what life really is, yeah. is is that like my like my nanny she told me she used to say that to me. Children are to see be seen but not heard, but then also then told me. Um, you know, be careful of those who don't not who don't bow before children, right? Um, so it's like the same. But she told mm. me that later on mm. in um, her grandma years, and I was thankful for that because like Naz is my teacher. You know, yes. Indy is um, my son Justin. Um, I had a child at sixteen that that passed. Um, her name was mm. Nazarene's oldest um, sibling. Oh my gosh, mm. so many teachings in yeah. that and. Yep, soon, and then when you're still gonna still be teaching me stuff. It's beautiful. Man, love, love, love. I mean, this has been like a rich, powerful discussion. I'm so grateful that you um, made, made time for this. Like I said, it was last minute. I just reached out just on, on a whim. I'll, it, it was a thought that came to me. I was like, yeah, like, it'd be kind of cool to have a discussion on this. And you came through as always, and I, I just appreciate you so much. Um, and, you know, I see we're coming. And Nan's gonna just woke right up. <laughs> Just camping with her, with her dad and 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 and, and Tanya and her sisters this I past love it. Week, weekend. She just got home. Wow! And then I was, As, help me with this. Hey, you want to stay? You, you see what I'm saying? Like it, it's you know, and and you know what's interesting? Like a lot of these like Monday lives that I do, like are, like these people don't know this, but I'm, I'm going to let it out. Like a lot of the, the topics are like created like last minute, like literally like the late night or in the morning, and somehow things just always come together. Um, sometimes even have like guests like in, in the chat, just jump on the live and they share their opinion. And, and that's really what we wanted just to create this like community space, you know, so. Well, it's um, beautiful. And I, you know, I'm always thankful for the work that you do, you know, even before we came in to, 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 to your classroom there, we've like, I've always watched what you've done in the community and, <laughs> and, and seen it. And it's absolutely beautiful. 
Like, thank you, so thank you. Big shout out to you and so much love to you, Ledger, because, and to have that trust, to know, you know yes. what, I can throw something together last minute like this, and it's just going to be beautiful. That <laughs> is a power in itself, because I know. sometimes we self-doubt. Oh, um, man. And that's another teaching of John Trudell is through the mm. self-doubt, insecurities, mm. and, and all of those that we we disconnect. But when you have you have the power to do that, to be like, I'm just going to, it's going to be good, and it's going to be great. That is really <laughs> tapping into your power. So thank, thank you. For that. Wow. That's oh, good. man. It's and getting me emotional now. Like said, epic. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, yo, I just want to shout out all the people in the chats. Um, let me see here. I see uh, Sage MC Mahone. I hope I'm pronouncing that uh, correctly. It says, I always feel my heart to hear your, hear your voice. Knowledge and stories, Nicole and Nazarene. Thank you for allowing me to listen into this dialogue. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. See some hearts here. Um, let's see uh, Maya Gomez official, some hearts, strawberry fire. Uh, I like that. <laughs> um, shout, you, shout out, shout out, Sim Symbolic One. Says this is such a beautiful discussion. I appreciate this so much. I am at a 10 now. Yo, that's what's up, man. We're raising vibrations out here, man. That's what we're doing. And, 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 and Maya gave us a, a shout out there. We just want to say, like, we were a part of um, Maya's um, video. We're in their, their, their music video, um, um, I Can't Read, which is really a beautiful, um, it's a beautiful, powerful, meaningful video. If any of you get a chance to, to see it. I can't read. Okay. Gorgeous. And and it actually tells a beautiful story with Nazarene and I in it, along with their their personal stories. It's beautiful. Amazing. Okay, so, I'm I'm gonna look that up for sure. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Because yeah, you man. know we, we talk about you know that music too, um, because um, they do um, they are a, 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 have their um, different style of, of music, and it's absolutely beautiful that we can have these communities come in that way. Um, and it's like, it's it's another that form of connection, you know, mm. is through music, through dance, through community and understanding. It's beautiful. Amazing, love it, love it. I'm gonna keep. There's, we got a few, a few more shout outs. Man, shout out Jolene, uh, saying um, thank you all. You are all such a gift in this life. My gratitude. Give thanks, man. Jolene, you're a gift as well. Like I see all the work you're doing. Amazing, amazing individual. Um, shout out Daisy, man, saying a great convo, convo and insight. Thank you. Much gratitude. Got Moonstone 56, big up, big up, saying thank you for creating this enlightening and beautiful space. You know, love, you know, hashtag authenticity. Yeah. Yes. Um, oh, Symbolic is in, came back and said, uh, what's it called? What's the, mu the, uh, the music video called again? Um, I Can't Read. I Can't Read. read. I'm just going to put yeah. it there. Yep. So, um, yeah, and that was over the pandemic. Mm. From Nazarene is that, and I um, are, are featured in it. Um, it's absolutely beautiful to be able to, to work with and it actually tells that story of us passing, um, passing on to the next generation and also too, um, also speaks to like um, what it's like, you know, for us, you know, for like me as, as her mother not knowing that, because when we talk about, you know, what's going on in societal wise, right? right. Um, in society, especially when, it, um, when a lot of the protests um, um, happened after George Floyd and, mm -hmm. and whatnot, what that would be like for, for, for our future generations. And for, mm. yeah. So That's it's really beautiful. looked at that systematic and that um, oppressions and how it comes really into our personal lives, beautiful. Just Amazing. Get me thinking. <laughs> yeah, it, hey, that, that that's what we do. We feed off. Well, you know, this might this th all this might be something for our Thursday group because, like I said, I'm gonna have you come through to our, our our Thursday virtual group, and this might be something that we can discuss. Mm -hmm. And you know, like I, I'm just gonna like find ways to just plug you into like everything. <laughs> I, we ha we have a lot of like you know, especially in September when schools start, get back up, and you know, like I I want to like make something like official, like some kind of official partnership or something. Because um, mm -hmm. both of you have so much insight and teachings and wisdom, and I'm just excited to to learn and to contribute and to share, and I, I just feel something like really really powerful. So so thank you, thank you all, oh, and okay. um, yes, and you know continue to do the work that you're doing because it's it's extremely important and it's powerful. People are taking note, people are being inspired. You know, like I I became I'm becoming really present to how much people were able to inspire that that we're not even aware of. 
You know what I mean? Like, just, just, just for me being me, like me just doing my thing. Like, some of my people may see me with my kids and I'm just doing what, you know, fatherhood does, you know what I mean? And, but for other people, it's like seeing those examples are like super important. And I don't realize that, you know, so it's, um, it, it's really, really cool, you know? So continue to just be yourself. And like you said, that, that knowing, you know, sometimes I, I'm about to like, you know, like teach a class and I don't have a work plan. I, I'm, I'm just going to freestyle. <laughs> this is hip hop to me, man. <laughs> I know you know what I'm talking about. I know you know. Yeah. And, and like you said, like it comes out and, and it's beautiful. It always, there has never been a time. A matter of fact, when I over plan, that's when things get a little crazy, you yeah, know, but, exactly. it, but it, it's so true and how that's a gift and, and that's a talent in itself. And I'm going to take that away in this conversation and, and to trust that more because I have my own insecurities, believe it or not, and whatnot. But like, I'm, I'm really going to hold that one with me. So, so thank you. Thank you. We, we wish for that because it's, yes. it is, it's living that authentic, it's just you, right? And that's, that's it. what we love is being our honest true selves. Yeah. I love it. So we are going to end like that. Um, thank you, everybody who's been rocking with us. You know, um, every every Monday, man, we have our, our check-in, you, you good fam, and where we have, you know, authentic conversations and, and people. So if anybody has any other topics that they, you know, feel the need to, to cover, you know, please let me know. But we're going to keep it going, man, every week. Man. So thank you. Thank you for being here. And yeah, man, well, we'll see you all next week, man. Till next time. All right. Thank you, Rich. Peace. Thank you.